Welcome to the described directory services in Azure, including Microsoft Entra ID and Microsoft Entra Domain Services. Note, when we talk about Entra, this was formerly known as Azure AD. So when we say Entra ID, that was formerly known as Azure AD, and Entra Tenant was an Azure AD tenant. So it's good to know those historical terms. Now, if we think about directory services, we started off on-premises. So on-premises, we would have an Active Directory Domain Services instance. So I can think about, we would use a triangle. So Active Directory was a group of roles within Windows Server, and Domain Services was the core directory service capability. Now this was an accounts shared database. So I could have, for example, users, I could have groups of users, I could have machines join that domain. And any resource that was part of that domain could use that shared set of credentials and permissions. So I had a great single sign-on experience for the users. Now this Active Directory Domain Services instance was facilitated by domain controllers. So I would have normally at least two, but it was one or more domain controllers that hosted a particular Active Directory domain. And I could create a hierarchy into which I could place all these objects. So you would have a hierarchy, which I could have child, and these were called organizational units. So I could have this whole hierarchy configured of these OUs. This was based on the X.500 structure. And the whole benefit of these is at an OU level, I could do things like delegation. So I could give you permission to manage only a subset of resources. I could apply group policy, which is how I could do various configurations and restrictions. And obviously I could use it for basic organization for my different resources. And so we could structure and organize, it was this hierarchical nature. And then for the interactions, it was designed to work on a private network. So it used many different ports and protocols, but for the authentication, so that that proof of who I am, it would use NTLM or Kerberos. It would, if I wanted to interact and query, I could use LDAP, Lightweight Directory Access Protocol. And to actually find the different domain controllers and the services available, it would use DNS. And once again, this worked great within a private network because you could have fairly free flowing types of communications. But now we can think about well, the cloud. So obviously our focus here is Azure. So now if we scroll this down, now I need a solution for the cloud. And if we think about the cloud, the requirements are very different. We can't just use any port and protocol. We really like to try and use 443, those TLS protected sets of communications. So I need an identity provider that can work in the cloud. And this is where Entra ID comes in. So now I would create an Entra tenant. So this is the Entra ID set of technologies and that was the formerly known as Azure Active Directory. Now the whole point here is it's designed to speak cloud. We're speaking things like OAuth, OpenID Connect, SAML, WS Fed. It's all around those cloud-based authentications. And the point is because it's a cloud identity provider, Think of all the different apps that exist out there. Well, all of those apps, I can federate with my particular instance. So what that federation really means is that particular app is trusting this particular tenant, my tenant, to perform authentication. And then within my app, I may have various permissions and those permissions will be in terms of the accounts that are within this particular tenant. So that's really the whole point around that. I just have one set of accounts in here. And it could be third-party applications, third-party SaaS applications, 
But obviously, it's also going to be the Microsoft technologies. So Microsoft 365, it could be Dynamics. And obviously, a huge one in this context is Azure. So all of these, once again, trust a particular instance of an entry tenant. In this case, your entry tenant. And for any authentication, any authorization, hey, I want to go and access this particular property, this particular resource, there's a technology called conditional access, which we're gonna talk about. Basically, it evaluates the particular request and it surrounds the entire entry tenant. So no matter what type of interaction I'm doing, it's gonna go through that conditional access so I can apply those protections. I could maybe detect risk, I can base it on location, what groups I'm in, my device state, to protect all of those different authorizations. That's really a key point. And it's not even just pure cloud applications. One of the things you could do is imagine, for example, I had a resource on premises that I didn't want to just expose out directly to the internet. Well, there's different solutions here as well. For example, one of the things we can do is there's a whole set of Entra Secure Service Edge solutions. So one of them is called Entra Private Access. So this provides connectivity to my private resources that I have in a private network via that Entra Edge. And then really at the other end of that scale, I can also think about just the general internet but I want to maybe restrict and control certain sites I can go to. Well, in that case, there's a corresponding technology, Entra Internet Access, that once again can use controls, to say, hey, can I access these different types of site? And for all of these things, obviously you still have machines, so I still have my regular machine here. And those machines can either be registered, i.e. it is a known entity to your tenant, and it can even be joined. And then I can directly authenticate with one of those cloud accounts. So we can absolutely do that registration or that join. And then we can tie into other technologies. You'll commonly hear about sort of mobile device management solutions. Intune is a Microsoft example. And then that can do the full management, assign policies of those devices. So it's known to my entry tenant, and then I can bring mobile device management technologies on top of that. Now, one of the other connections we have, we had this idea of the entry tenant and we had our Active Directory domain services, but they're very often not isolated. As an organization, we have both of them. And so what I really want is, the Active Directory domain services is gonna be the source of truth. Now, they could also be a HR system, but that's outside the scope of what you need to worry about. But the accounts come here, and what I'm gonna commonly want is for those accounts to flow into here. So one option is the account gets created here and then the synchronization will create the account up here as well. Now I can also just directly create cloud accounts that are not created or synchronized from here. To do the synchronization, there are Entra Connect technologies. Now there's two different ones available. They're really doing the same thing but one of them is called Entra Connect Sync. So with Entra Connect Sync, and this is the original technology, think of it as the engine that does the work, that's really running on premises. So I have to have special VMs that has these, these connector spaces and it understands, and it is reading and then really pushing those accounts up. The other option we have is Entra Cloud Sync. 
And as you would expect here, the engine is running up in the cloud. All I have to have is some very lightweight agents running on my domain controllers that facilitates the communication. They're doing the same thing. The accounts are replicated up to Entra. As a user, I think it's the same account. I get a nice seamless sign-on experience. So the, the different responsibilities, different things I have to manage. We're definitely moving in that direction, but there are two different technologies. Now, the other thing we need to think about is on-premises, great, you have your Active Directory domain services. In the cloud, I have my Entra ID. But when we think about Azure, one of the things that's going to very commonly happen is well, in Azure, we have this idea of a virtual network. We have our subscription, we have a virtual network, and I have different resources within here. Now, what if there's some resource in here that needs to speak the old legacy Active Directory main, domain services? It needs to maybe do Kerberos, or it needs to do NTLM, or it wants to speak LDAP. This doesn't really speak those. There are some now capabilities in Entra around Kerberos, but for the most part, it's not doing the same things this could do. So how do we solve that? Well, there's two options. Maybe the simplest option, if available to us, is this is a network. Our Active Directory, our on-prem is a network. Can we connect the networks? So one option is we have some connection, a pipe, and that pipe could be, for example, a site-to-site -site VPN, or it could be express route, private peering. So now there's IP connectivity. I would have a certain configuration of DNS so it can go and find the servers and then speak Kerberos, NTLM, LDAP. What if I don't have an Active Directory domain services, I'm fresh, I'm born in the cloud, or I don't want to expose this to the cloud? That's not a great reason these days with the security mechanisms. The cloud is probably more secure than the on-premises. But let's say this is not an option. Well, I can't just use my basic entry tenant. It doesn't speak those things. But what we can do is this is where we can use the Entra domain services. So the Entra domain services is a managed domain. So what it's going to do is actually perform a synchronization this way into a managed Entra domain services instance. It's going to create two domain controllers for you. You have no access to them. This is part of something called a replica set. And so the objects in here will get created in here as well. So now these resources can talk to this managed domain and speak Kerberos and NTLM and LDAP. I am not an enterprise admin. I am not a domain admin. There are a lot of restrictions on exactly what I can do. I cannot talk to the domain controllers. But if I use the enterprise SKU and I have different regions, I, as long as there's a connection between these VNets, I could stand up additional replica sets. I can have five in total. So I could have this and then four other regions with a set of managed domain controllers. But again, they have to be peered so the domain controllers can replicate to each other. And then I get all of those legacy capabilities, but I'm not having to manage those domain controllers. So that is the key point. And this completes this lesson. Thank you.